Is it Donald Walker how uh, the great historian who's written a new book recently called What Hath God Wrought? And it is a historical for us to think that the religious right period is the first time in which you know, religious movements were closely engaged with the political party. And he shows quite clearly that the rise of uh, evangelicalism uh, in the sort of 1820s, 1830s, that great awakening, was intimately tied to the rise of the Whig Party. And that the Whigs without the evangelicals wouldn't have been the Whigs, not to mention that the abolitionists wouldn't have been the abolitionists without religion. And so what Jim Wallace has been saying, that the original altar call were people coming up to declare themselves against slavery. So this is, we've had episodes like this before, so it's not quite as strange as we thought it was because we came out of that long period. I, I think that the Democrats have a very complicated coalition problem because if you look at John Green's numbers, um, excellent you know, pollster and academic, 20% um, of the Kerry vote came from secular people against 7% of George Bush. Indeed, the Democratic vote is completely polyglot. Uh, religiously. Um, and so they do have a coalition management problem. Um, and I too, I for, I'll never forget, I was at a dinner with some very dear friends and I got my head taken off because I too was defending Kipper Gore back in the 80s. You know, and it, it's a, um, you know, and in my book I have a very complicated relationship with atheists because on the one hand I welcome an atheist as a general proposition uh, because I think they take the question of belief as seriously as other believers. And as Leon Wieseltier has said, if believers cannot intellectually respond uh, to the atheist challenge, they need to go back to the drawing boards. And parenthetically, he wrote a great piece that ran under the headline, God Bless Atheists. Uh, and I quoted Leon in a column, and I got my favorite email ever from a reader. A lot of them are. Somehow people usually disagree with you, but uh, occasionally they're. Don't. And I got one from Rita that said, you know, I'm an atheist, and if I may say so, God bless you. However, I think there's something about the neo-atheist writers. They have become as dogmatic as the dogmatists they them. You know, Chris Hitchens' book, Religion Poisons Everything. Everything? Uh, everything? I mean, um, you know, it, it entirely overlooks the, not only the acts of mercy that have been done in the name of religion, not only... Um, the remarkable intellectual achievement of believers over the centuries. Um, it also uh, ignores the intellectual, the political challenges to the status quo, the positive political challenges to the status quo that, just to name a few, Isaiah, Micah, Amos, Exodus, the book of Exodus, and Jesus himself has uh, encouraged in our history the movement toward freedom, not away uh, from freedom. And so, yes, I think it's a challenge, but I agree with Amy. I mean, a lot of Democrats discovered God in the 2004 exit polls. Uh, now, you can discover God anywhere, and so that's okay. And some of it's opportunistic, uh, but I think people, a lot of Democrats just took a step back and said, maybe we should think about this more carefully. But I agree, it's a real argument. I've gotten that grief, Amy has, um, but I think there's more openness now than there was, say, before the 2004 election.